We all know the mantra, pay your dues and graduate from college and you'll enjoy a successful career. So for some, the goal is a bachelor's degree. There's an unspoken belief that the job market is just waiting for hordes of ambitious, eager young graduates to slide into high paying jobs in the corner office. But statistics tell a different story. This is known as the skills gap. You must have the technical and employable skills industry requires in order to compete for jobs within your chosen career. Let us understand about one of the commonly used sulfate resisting cement. But before this, first we need to understand that why do we need sulfate resistance. We need sulfate resistance against the sulfate attack. Now what is the sulfate attack? Now as we have studied in the previous module, the magnesium sulfate reacts with the calcium hydroxide. Now calcium hydroxide is one of the byproduct of cement when it react with water. So this calcium hydroxide when react with magnesium sulfate it forms calcium sulfate. Now once the calcium sulfate is present in the cement it reacts with the calcium aluminate to form the calcium sulfoaluminate and this reaction result into the increase in the volume and due to this increase in the volume there is a resulting in expansion generating cracks in the structure now this is known as the sulfate attack so in simple word sulfate attack is basically the calcium hydroxide which is the byproduct of the cement water reaction it reacts with the magnesium sulfate to form calcium sulfate and whenever the calcium sulfate is available it will react with the calcium aluminate to form the compound which has a greater volume resulting into the expansion and thus cracking. So we need to resist this sulfate attack and for which we use sulfate resisting cement. Now what properties provide the resistance against the sulfate? If the content of C3A is reduced in the cement then the chance of reaction of sulphate with C3A also reduces preventing the sulphate attack. So in very simple way calcium hydroxide when react with the sulphate forms calcium sulphate. Now this calcium sulphates react with the calcium aluminate. If somehow we reduce the quantity or content of this calcium aluminate in the cement then the calcium sulfate will not be able to react to form the compound which has a greater volume and thus behaving as a resisting against the sulfate attack. Now such cement with low C3A and comparatively low C3AF content is known as the sulfate resisting cement. Now what are the applications of sulfate resisting cement? Now sulfate resisting cement, first it is used in the marine conditions because there is lot of sulfate in humid nature, magnesium sulfate can attack on the calcium chloride. The second thing is concrete to be used in the foundation and basement where soil is infested with the sulfate. So basically the sulfate presence may come from the soil. So if this sulfate, magnesium sulfate can be prevented by reacting with the calcium hydroxide then the entire concrete can be more durable. So in the areas where there is presence of more sulfate through the soil this particular cement is suggested. Then concrete used for fabrication of pipe which is likely to be buried in marshy region of sulfate bearing soils. Again we need to bury the pipes for the services in the soil. So if the soil has more sulfate content we must we must use the sulfate resisting cement. And the fourth use is the sewage treatment work. Concrete to be used in the construction of sewage treatment work. 
बिकॉज इन सीवेज ट्रीटमेंट एरियाज देर इज मोर सल्फेट एंड हैंस सल्फेट रेजिस्टिंग सीमेंट कैन बी यूज Education is core to our economy. But in order to guide our educational systems and maximize future income, we must understand the misalignment between education and our work me. The university degree is no longer the guaranteed path towards financial success as it was for previous generations. And even if you do earn one, that education alone may not be enough. In today's highly technical knowledge-based economy, having hands-on skills and perfecting what you're good at can be more valuable than getting a degree in something simply to get one. Employers want to know what you can do and what you can do well, not just what degree hangs on your wall. Is career exploration. Understand the jobs available, the income ranges they pay, and evaluate the skills they require. Identifying is to align your interests and abilities with your first career choice and the education and training you'll need to receive. This alignment will help bring your future into focus and ensure your position at the top of the pay scale in your chosen career.